Welcome to Transmissions. In the last episode we saw that there is no individual. If there is no individual, all the actions that are being done by the individuals are being done by nobody. This is very difficult to understand at first because we are so habitual of assigning the actions that are being produced by this body mind mechanism to myself or to the individual that we do not even pause and think what actions are happening who is doing them what is the cause that is responsible for that action for that effect in this delusion of the individual we are so busy acting that we do not even reflect on what actions that happened there is another delusion that is far more deeper and complicated than the illusion of individual is that the individual is doing everything according to his or her own will let us find out how the actions are happening and who is doing them what is the meaning of willing or intending or desiring all the actions they happen through the body but they start in the mind the actions have a seed in the mind that seed can be called as an intention the intention is an impulse a decision a desire which gets translated into actions of the motor systems in the body by the medium of the nervous system and this much is already known to everyone i think the body is capable of producing only one action and that is contraction of the muscles when we walk or when we work with hands or even when we speak nothing else is happening except contraction and relaxation of muscles and that is happening in response to the signals that are being sent by the nervous system the body acts in a predefined way as it is recorded in the memory if you need to perform a new action you need to learn it first you need to memorize that action first otherwise the body is incapable of doing it it can be speech it can be other acts such as writing or dancing or even walking the actions of the body they come from the memory that is very very obvious but the memory is being governed by other memories the action of the body is initiated by other processes in the mind that also are a memory there are memories in the different layers of the mind and there is a process in the mind that scans through the memories just like there needs to be an experience recorded in the memory in order for the body to perform an action there needs to be an experience that tells the mind what action to do there are millions and millions of various events and experiences that are impinging on our minds that are getting recorded in this memory and there is a process in the mind that scans through these memories and produces an impulse the impulses can come from the internal memory where the experiences are being stored or it can be triggered from external situations or sometimes situations within the body 
So we can identify three kinds of triggers for action. The first is very, very obvious. If something changes in the physical world, for example, you're walking on a path and suddenly a wild animal appears. Now that is perceived and the internal program in your mind initiates an action. The, the action can be self-defense, running or killing or anything. If you're walking and the rain starts falling, the mind initiates an action to protect the body. If you meet an old friend, the mind brings up a good memory and your body reacts in that joyous manner. It is all a pre-learning that is being executed when the situations change around the body. The second trigger is the body itself. When you feel hunger, you, your body rushes to the kitchen to find some food. When you feel pain, the body wants to relax, the body wants to sit down or lie down if it's not well. The third trigger is within the mind itself. There are many kinds of mental triggers, such, such as the triggers coming from the lower layers of the mind. Whenever you recall a bad incident that happened recently, an action is triggered. That action can be thought, that action can be speech, or even the body starts moving to realize that action. A thought appears in your mind of you being insulted by somebody. Now all kinds of negative thoughts of anger and hate, they arrive in your mind and they push the body, they push even the speech to happen. You either start talking in anger, you may want to write an email, a hate mail to that person. That is another action that can be triggered by the lower layer of the mind. Or you may just take your gun and go and hunt for that person who insulted you last week. Similarly, a thought of your loved one appears in your mind and you decide to call that person. That is an action. It is also happening impulsively. It can be something good, it can be something bad. And there can be thoughts that come from the intellectual layers of the mind. For example, you remember something to buy and then you rush towards the shop to buy it. Or you are bored and you want some entertainment and you turn on the TV. Or you open a book and start reading. These are intellectual impulses and they translate into actions. There can be many in-between layers in the mind which produce those impulses. And we can say that, we can roughly say that there is a process in the mind that is scanning the memories and brings up impulses in the mind that push the body into action. The thinking is also an action even though it is not a movement of uh, muscles in the body, it is a movement of thought. It is a movement of the mind itself. It is a non-physical action which does not appear in the world. The body is the one, the body is the instrument through which this, these non-physical impulses are converted into physical actions through the nervous system and the muscular system, the skeleton and muscles in the body. This process is some, sometimes called default mode or, or the default network in the brain. It is doing nothing. It is simply scanning the mind for any unfulfilled actions, any unresolved issue, any memories that needs to be converted into actions and it brings them up again and again and again. It is a process. Remember, it is a loop. It goes on and on and on in our waking time. There are processes which you are already familiar with that bring the body into actions of one kind or the other kind. For example, breathing. It is going on in the loop. The heart beating, the digestion, excretion, 
and sleep, waking, these cycles are going on in the body. There are other cycles in different layers of the mind, the egoic cycles. Uh, whenever it uh, encounters a memory that is a survival issue, it quickly, very impulsively pushes the body into action. There are uh, higher layers of the mind where this process is also going on and they push the organism, this whole mind-body, into one or other kind of action. If there is no corresponding experience, this process, the scanning process, cannot produce an impulse, cannot produce a desire, cannot produce an intention, which is also known as will in commonly used language. This will or this intention is a small action in the mind. The mind sometimes rehearses the action also, which is also called planning. When we are hungry and we are doing something, the hunger signal reaches the mind and the impulsive process there, the process of intention produces a small action in the mind, which is a rehearsal of going to the kitchen and eating something. This appears as thought. Sometimes the thought appears as internal monologue also, which is like thinking, I better go to the kitchen and eat something, I'm very hungry. It finally becomes action of the mouth, of your feet, hands and so on. And the body takes over, chews the food, digests it and so on. If there is no experience, there is no action. There is no intention. There is no rehearsal of the action. There are no thoughts about it. For example, if you've never seen a particular kind of car, the intention of buying that car will never arrive in your mind. It's not possible. It is not possible to will something which is not in your experience. It will. There will be various thoughts of buying other cars which you have seen but not the one which you have never seen. Till you go to the showroom and see the car for yourself, then this experience arrives in the memory and that process of intention creation gives you an option to choose. But we can say that the choice is the essence of the willing, not the memory. Well, the choice is also not there if there is no experience of that thing. If nobody insults you, you do not have any choice to go and fight with that person. It has to be in the memory. It has to be recorded in the memory first. And then the processes take over and they produce the intentions and wills and you can find choices there. You can say that I am free to choose. Even if there are limited experiences, limited memories, limited impressions of these experiences, I am free to choose one action out of many. Now this is very funny because we have seen that there is no I am. There is no individual there which does anything. The mind does the choosing also and it does it depending on its likes and dislikes. We all know this, that we pick the things that we like instead of things that we dislike. If we like a specific color, we choose that. If we like a specific shape, we choose that. If we like a specific kind of food, we choose that. Even the words that we are going to speak are being chosen because they are in the memory and there is a bias towards choosing a specific kind of word. Sometimes this process becomes very, very involved. Like we sometimes choose something which is not our choice. And there is usually another program there which is forcing us to do that. For example, we are sitting in the classroom and we do not want to listen to the lecture of the teacher and we want to look at something else. But the teacher, when, when the teacher notices you, there is a process in the mind that starts which is of fear or 
of embarrassment or something like that which forces this mind to attend to the lecture instead of doing something else and we say that i had the choice to choose something else but something forced me to choose another action which i did not will but the reality is that this willing also happened and it happened through the same mind under the influence of another process instead of the default process of choosing that which we like most the external event the the command of the teacher biased our choices the bias can also come from within our body for example we want to sit and watch a movie but the body says go to toilet first and we say i am not free to choose this action of watching the movie because there is another choice which is forcing me to leave the room go to bathroom we say i was not free but this choice was made in a similar way in the process that made the choice of watching the movie is exactly the same as the process which made the choice to go to bathroom this whole process appears as a process of decision making in the mind it is mostly impulsive it does not involve involve a lot a lot of thought but sometimes this uh, process of decision making choosing can be rather complicated for example you want to buy a house now you think about it for many many weeks you arrange the money you go to the lawyer you find out whether the property is good whether it will give us returns or not and then you proceed with the action you do not do it impulsively and the process of decision making is very involved it involves something which called rational and logical thinking it is not emotional or impulsive it's not based on feelings or external situations and this gives us a very elaborate decision making process and very convincing illusion of free will that i chose this kind of action because i went through the decision making process and this is where ordinary people even the educated people fail to see that it is all being done in the mind and being acted through the body there is no me here the thoughts appear the biases are calculated and the decision happens it is likes and dislikes only but in a very refined form let us say a news appears in the newspaper that the property prices are going high and there your willing is biased by this external event the new experience and then there is another decision that happens probably i'll wait for the prices to go down and you can say i was not free to choose buying of my house but this decision happened as freely as the one that happened before or that would happen without this news of property prices grow, going up it is the bias the bias comes from external events or it can come from the internal events which we call as likes and dislikes what are likes and dislikes they are pre-programmed choices they are the preferences that form throughout our childhood or throughout our life also for example you do not like dogs probably because there was a fearful reaction from you there was some traumatic incident regarding the dogs in your childhood for example you do not like the color red probably because there was a toy in your childhood which was red in color and it caused some kind of pain or caused some kind of fear in your mind because of any reason now the dislike is impressed on your mind let's say you dislike eating meat probably it is because you went to the butcher shop you saw that a very cute and pretty animal is killed and torn into pieces 
and that produces a reluctance in your mind that produces a bias a disgust a dislike for that kind of food likes and dislikes also are pre-programmed they are past experiences impressed on our memory nothing else and the whole process of choosing happens through a series of biases it is not impossible to see all of them but some of them are so tiny so minute that it becomes difficult to perceive them and that is where the illusion of free will is strongest for example i give you two objects and i ask you to choose one which are not particularly good or bad for you not particularly uh, lovely or disgusting for you you are not totally uh, repulsed or attracted to them they are something neutral for example the shape of a circle or a shape of a triangle a very interesting experiment the biases are still there in your mind but they become imperceptible we can say that almost random processes happen in the mind because the mind has no obvious biases it is not a survival issue there is no particular like or dislike even the colors are same and then it becomes almost a random process but it is still coming from the mind the choice happens first the decision happens first and then it enters into and then it takes the form of will or intention the small action happens in the mind and then it is amplified by the nervous system into the gross action and you pick a shape you do not know why you choose it but you want to call it as my choice that is something funny because people will say that look this experiment demonstrates the free will but they are unable to tell why they chose something over the other and if they can tell oh i like circles because they are uh, beautiful than the triangles and that means that action was not free that will was not free it was biased by the preference for shape of circle so when we choose with free will we are not really knowing why we choose it when we choose in a biased way we know why we chose it but then it is not free perhaps you have never seen this happening perhaps you are busy choosing with your free will and acting without paying attention to what is going on it is not impossible to see all these processes in the mind you need to be very very alert you need to pay attention what is what is happening in the mind and you need to be aware if you do not have any awareness of the processes in the mind the thinking process the uh, biases the and uh, the choosing process your past experiences of your likes and dislikes your preferences then you are going to call it my will and then you will do it once it is done as and take uh, and taken as my action then you will defend it i am right because i did it this is usually the logic of the people or sometimes they will realize oh i did something very good or i made a mistake so anyhow the action is done first and the responsibility or the ownership is taken later whether it is a mistake it is a good action it is a bad action it is unintentional action anything we take the responsibility even the actions of the body such as burping sneezing coughing we do it first and then we say that i sneezed and then we say i am sorry because it's all conditioning it's all automated the ownership is taken later the responsibility is taken later we are not aware of this process which takes the responsibility it is another process in the mind which says the individual or i has done that process because it is seen as coming through this body sometimes we own the thoughts also we say that oh 
I thought this, I felt this, I want this. The want happens first and the thought of it is, it is being done by me comes later. The desire happens first and then the ownership of the desire arrives. There are some people who are slightly more awake and they will say, the thought occurred to me. But there is still me here. They know that the thought occurred, but they also know that then I proceeded to act on it or then I proceeded to think about it more. Those who are even more aware, they can see this rain of thoughts that is happening in the mind. This storm of desires and intentions and choices is going on in the mind non-stop. They are aware of that. And some of those choices, they necessarily turn into actions because usually there is no control. The less aware you are of the processes in the mind and the body, the less control there is. Look at the child. There is absolutely no control over whatever the body and minds are doing. As we grow up, we develop another process in the mind which intervenes in the actions. I am going to call it the process of intervention or discrimination. It is also called the Vivek. This process develops as the intelligence develops. As more experiences happen and the, this very infantile process starts happening on its own, the organism or the child sees that sometimes I can uh, let the thought sit there before acting. The thought just sits there, produces more thoughts and as soon as the impulse becomes strong enough, the action happens. Sometimes the intelligence is mature enough and brings in other memories, fetches other options and thinks about which, which action is best for me in the long term. Although it is still a desire fulfilling action, it is still an action that is uh, going to result into another action, a gross action from the body. But there is a delay. There is an intention there which chooses an action with some delay. Anyhow, this, this process of decision making is going to happen. Even not acting becomes an action. Greater intelligence means that this discrimination is also very well developed. There is a process that has taken over the impulsive processes. This is also called maturing of the individual, a mature mind does it. That does not uh, totally destroy the illusion of willing. We know that there is a will but the discriminating process can see it now and then the owner of the process says, well, I wanted something but I decided not to do it. This is the discrimination in action. Or I wanted to do something but I decided to do something else which was, which I thought was better action in my view. And that is again the process of discrimination in action. But it is exactly happening just like the impulsive processes. Only that there is slight delay involved and there is an intellect involved. The impulse now must go through the screening mechanism in the intellect before it is converted into action. But the individual is going to say, the person is going to say, oh, it was my decision, my will. I took the action because of my will. I discriminated. I discriminated because I wanted to. Which is a double illusion, as you can see. The decisions happen. Even very, very complex decisions they go through the same discriminating machinery and the ownership is taken later on. 
The decision making can be very elaborate, but it can be seen that it simply happens under the influence of biases, which means the impressions that are already stored in the memory. The intellect has simply delayed the process, considered a few more options that are already in the memory, and then it spits out an action which the body mind owns in form of thought that I am going to do this action now or I am doing it after thinking. It is my will that I will do this action. So it does not matter how long the process is or how complicated the processes are, whether it is knee-jerk reaction, it's just rightly called because just control system in action or whether it is impulsive egoic action which is most related to survival and uh, egoic uh, um, reasons and or the intellectual actions the actions that we think are rational and logical they are all products of the mind products of the memory and its processes Whatever you call as willing is automated. Nobody is there to will. You can see it when you uh, come across more aware people, more educated, probably more intelligent people, just like artists. When you ask a painter, why did you decide to put a yellow color there instead of red? Or why did you paint this thing in this particular way? And the painter usually has no answer. He says... There is something which drives my hand, which picks my brush. The painting happens. I am not painting it. I do not will. If I will something, if I desire something, then I produce a mechanical piece of art. Which is disgusting, which is ugly. It is a repetition of what I already know. If I draw a face in a particular way, I am going to always draw it in that way because the mind has been trained now to draw it in that way. But when I, when I don't let these picking and choosing to happen, the creativity appears. Sometimes the stroke goes in a different direction than you intended and it is more beautiful. It is new creation. And we say that. We cannot create using our will. The creation happens. Although later on the artist is going to say, the ego comes up, you see. The individual creation process comes out and takes the ownership of the creation also. Usually it is just a free flowing of impressions from the memory into the piece of art. For example, a sculptor is sculpting in the clay and has no particular intention of building a particular kind of face or head there. Simply uh, obeys whatever is coming from the deep memories. Whatever the mind thinks is beautiful is being sent out through his nervous system and hands into the clay. And the clay takes form. And the sub and surprising thing is that the artist is not thinking when he is creating. When the artwork is finished, the artist is himself as surprised and is mesmerized by what was created as other people who are looking, onlookers. A spiritual seeker or a meditator or a yogi goes 100 steps above the artist. He can see each and every process in his mind. Even the ones that, are, that have low amplitude, like they are below the threshold of your internal senses, they also become obvious because of this habit of paying attention, because of this practice of being aware of the mental processes. Now each and every process in the mind, all the activity of the mind is in clear picture and you can guess now that is going to sharpen the instrument of discrimination in that person. Now the tiniest impulse does not go out into the environment without being screened. It is like the watchman who is 
very honest, who, who, who knows his duty and he is doing it honestly, without stopping, without sleeping. Anything that comes up in the mind that is being generated by these uh, uh, action triggering mechanisms in the mind, the default network, they must pass through this awareness, this gate of awareness. They are checked for what consequences they can produce. And only that which is most necessary is allowed through this gate of discrimination. Nothing else goes through. All other desires and wills and free choices, they are stopped. You can see now that such a person who has this, this discrimination and awareness experiences more freedom than a person where this intellect is not working, where the discrimination is not present. A person who is impulsive, almost like an animal or like a child or like a robot obeying the commands from the body, obeying the commands from the mind. This not only refines our actions, this gives us extra control over our actions. We know what consequences the actions or the impulses are going to produce and we have a new choice there, which is a very, very important choice. It is a very valuable choice. Probably it is the most important choice that you have. That is to not to act. To not to act when an impulse or an intention arises in your mind. You know now that it is not my choice. It is not my desire. It is not my will. It is. It has simply appeared in the space of mind. Now I am not obliged to carry it out and to convert it into an action. At least I have another choice to sit down and think first. What should I do? What will be the consequence? This is enabled only by awareness. Awareness of what is going on in the mind. If you do not have this awareness, the action will find its way out in the environment. And the consequences will find their way from the environment into your mind. This is a cyclic process. We are trapped in this cycle. The cycle of actions and consequences. The law of karma. We are trapped in this law because the discrimination is not functioning. Because many individuals, they do not have the choice to not to act or to delay the action or to find a better action or to engage their rational and logical abilities first before acting out. So you saw somebody smoking cigarette and you thought, oh, how cool it is. Or somebody brainwashed you that it is cool, this is the mark of the man to smoke. And when the inter intellect is inactive or in more common language, when the person is stupid, simply repeats that action, copies that behavior. And it becomes ingrained, which is a very good word. It becomes an impression, a permanent impression in the mind. The pleasure and pain centers, they become involved, which means likes and dislikes. You are pushed into that action. It is like a whiplash of that, of that past memory which makes you do that action. And if the consequences are bad, which will be the case when you act impulsively, then who suffers? Nobody. This body and this mind. There is no individual to suffer. Just like we saw in the episode on the illusion of suffering. I never suffer. There is no I. There is only an experiencer who is experiencing this uh, drama of choosing, discarding, acting, not acting and all that. When this experiencer is present, you will find that no actions happen. The mind continues its activities, but it is like clouds coming in the sky and then dissipating. It is like the clear sky always where the clouds come and go. It is a very beautiful state to be in and that is why we call it bliss. 
the meditative state where we are ab- simply observing the things that are going on in the mind and in the body and the environment is blissful it's called the anand and it is not wrong to say that the bliss is my nature because the activity of the mind is not present here or even if it is present it is seen as not me it is its ownership is not taken <laughs> it is very very blissful it is very very freeing because for the first time in your life you have this option to not act probably if you want to call it will or free will this is the most free thing that you can do all of your actions are bound by your experiences that are impressed on your memory and bound by all these processes biases which are other experiences other programs going on in your memory there is no freedom there even if you call it my free will is not free it is willing itself it is free to do whatever it wants to do it does not take your permission there is no you to permit this discrimination can be developed to such an extent that it stops all actions and that is the ultimate freedom that includes the actions to take birth in this world that includes the actions to free the mind completely from the impulsive events which we call as my desires <laughs> this is liberation from birth and death the karmic liberation Libra- liberation from the cycles of birth and death liberation from the sansar it is the mukti it is the moksha it is the nirvana now some people will say now with this kind of not acting where there is nothing happening what will i do there is that is the mind asking it which is so habitual of doing things which is so habitual of owning the desires and the actions because it sees an emptiness there no action nothing happening no activities not even birth no question of bodies or the person or the individual or the mind and that it does not like the mind does not like absence it wants something it wants some action which must be your own experience and nothing to worry nothing to worry at all because this cannot be stopped the activity of the mind cannot be stopped you will say no 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 but you just said that you will not be born it is impossible <laughs> the births happen but now the mind is not associated with those births it is another level of existence about which i am not going to say a lot today there will be long long discussions about these things the causal body and its liberation and all those topics in our coming episodes in more videos future videos i have planned a long series of videos on the very very complicated matters and things that are in, not in your experience right now so don't worry don't worry what this higher state of existence is but in this state as you can guess actions happen without ownership even the births happen even the individuals are born even they do all kinds of actions but at that level nothing is owned the ownership happens only at the level of the individual the illusory individual just like the illusion of individual the ownership is also illusion the actions are also illusory nothing is really happening here but that is a discussion for another time now what are the implications of there being no doer and there being no free will <laughs> you can see you can see there is doing yes actions are happening there is willing yes sometimes it is random willing but it is not freedom the only freedom is non action even not acting is some kind of conditioning it is higher conditioning and then slowly the mind settles into this conditioning and then it looks like freedom actually there is no freedom in anything it is all actions 
consequences, experiences, memory, actions, consequences, and this cycle, also called the karmic cycle, continues as long as there is the substance of the mind, as long as there is this energy of the mind, which likes to act. It is futile to stop it, cannot be stopped. It is the experiencer itself that likes this kind of play. Cannot be stopped by this individual who thinks I can stop things because I have this new power to stop some of my actions. It is another bias, that's all it is. Even the greatest yogi has biased his mind to perform nothing. It is. It is an illusion that is bigger than the illusion of acting or actor. So anyhow, the first implication is that you are freed from your own actions. Now you need not take responsibilities of your past. Whatever you did in the past was not your doing. It was just your karmic structure or the impressions or the sense scars in the mind or the memory. Memory is a very simple word, but it's a big thing, you see. The actions are happening. It is, it is simply impulses coming from the memory and they appear in the body and environment, which are again mind. If you recall our discussion on the topic of illusion of the world, these objects that you see around is just mind created. So mind is like sending out these waves of impulses and they go to these other structures in the mind that they are reflected from it, which we call as consequences, and they make new impressions on the memory. And as soon as there are new impressions, well, they also produce waves, which, are, which we call intentions or will, and they then produce consequences. They travel again into the other structures of the mind. They get reflected, consequences, new impressions. So it is a cyclic thing. It is not being done by me. I am only a silent observer of what is going on. You cannot observe these things right now because you are not aware. You never spent time to pay attention to what is going on. <laughs> you are too busy acting and taking responsibility of your actions. Too busy reacting. Too busy desiring and willing freely. It is a grand delusion. Your life is a lie. It is not your life. It is just happening. Your real life is observation. Your real life is consciousness of these things. That is the only thing that is alive. The mind, the body, the environment, other people, objects. They do not do anything. They are just waves in the ocean of the universal mind, which you are observing. You are associating with one or two particular waves that is random. <laughs> there is no reason for that. You can disassociate, disidentify right now and become free. This opportunity of liberation is right here, right now. There are other implications like, if I am not the doer, then should I stop doing everything like stop eating, stop breathing, stop speaking, and leave my job, leave my family? Well, that is not non-action, that is stupidity. The non-action happens on the background of actions. You are not the doer. That means you cannot even do this non-doing. Do not try to do the non-doing. The non-doing is already here. Just recognize it. It will appear as an awareness of what is being done. The discrimination network in your mind will kick in. It will stop all that is unnecessary. That is all is possible. It is stupidity to, to think that I can change a few things. The mind changes itself. The I does not do anything. It simply takes responsibility of it. That, oh, I changed it. Finally, I stopped smoking. No, it is not. Finally, I learned a new language. No, it is not you. <laughs> just more impressions, just more learning. That's all. So there is no need to stop anything. Let there be awareness and the mind will do the rest. There is no you to do anything. You are only a silent witness. The witness does not do anything, simply witnesses. It is very, very pure and innocent. It does not even own anything. It's like space. Okay, everything is allowed. If it goes, okay, it's fine also. If it changes, 
That's also fine for the witness. No problem at all. The mind has problems. The mind has biases and all. It wants to improve its actions. So go ahead and do that. <laughs> You're not free to stop it. Once this idea of improving myself gets hold in the mind, it will happen. It will end up improving this body and mind. It dies anyway, So, but the experience is pleasant. It is, it, and at least it won't produce suffering. That's why the great masters have said, you know, don't do anything, just improve yourself and then get rid of suffering. That's all. That's all you need to worry about. You're already liberated, you see. The witness is already liberated. It is not bound by biases, choices, likes, dislikes. It does not even discriminate. Discrimination is also a bondage. So, simply let the mind improve. Once this awareness is there, probably it should be there because I conditioned it. I conditioned your mind just now. Your mind could, couldn't have come up with this kind of thoughts. You see, it's always coming from somebody else. Always coming from a guru. So, even in this life, the life which I call my life, the, this mind was not able to think anything more than its past impressions. It, it was being dictated by whatever was stored in this mind, the sanskars. Only after meeting a guru, only after the guru showed that, oh, this is another possibility. There is another way to live, to live in awareness, to live as the witness, the conscious witness, to live as the Atman, the experiencer. Only then the mind started changing. Otherwise, it was repeating whatever was being impinged on it. This is the only freedom you have. This is the only will you have. And the rest is being done by the mother nature. It is already happening. The improvement is already happening. The only problem is it is producing a lot of suffering and pain. You can take a shortcut. Take the control if you want to think it like this. Take the control of your revolutionary process of this mind. The refinement of the mind can happen in awareness instead of in darkness. That is the whole. struggle of a spiritual seeker to get rid of this mechanical behavior of the mind. Let everything happen in the awareness. These are the implications. It does not mean not to act. You can continue acting in the society. You can, uh, you can see that without the action, the society is no more. There is no society if there are no actors, you see. You cannot punish people, you cannot reward people, you cannot pay them, you cannot feed them, you cannot control them if there is no individual, if there is no doer, nothing can be done. So the society, since it's an illusion, it will fall away as soon as this ideas of there being individual and free will, they fall away. So another interesting uh, implication of this realization is that you distance yourself from the society because now you cannot tolerate these zombies there. Another preference has been formed in your mind that I need to get away from this pit of darkness which you call my society. Civilization. Nothing civilized about this thing. They are totally unaware. Totally like a zombie army, they are simply repeating whatever is there in their memory. So now, a little bit of awareness will uh, condition your mind to stay away from the society and that will accelerate the refinement of the mind because now the mind is kind of habitual of reacting to other people and anything in the society, you must have seen it, simply regurgitates whatever is, uh, your senses are feeding it. Garbage in and garbage out. That is all going on in your mind, in your life, <laughs> even in your body. So, that is good, that is good because isolation accelerates your liberation. There can be many things, you will find that all your relations are relations of the mind and impulses, they will fall away. I'll go to the topic of relations in greater detail in the next episode. Right now, you can, you can see that and there is a after effect of this realization. 
brace yourself it is going to change your life if you have a life it is going to change the workings of this body mind if you want to call it like that if you don't want to call it life <laughs> because life does not change life is me myself that which is witnessing this explosion of awareness is me that is what i am and yes there will be fall out of this kind of realization the realizations of there being not individual is probably the biggest um bomb blast that your mind will witness in this in its life and uh, the illusion of free will this realization will be the final nail in the coffin of the ego does not really like it <laughs> it will it will trouble you a lot it will try to save itself by any means possible like a trapped animal it is going to resist that's why the spiritual path is a little bit difficult because of these conditionings of the mind because of this uh, our inability to accept what is before us but anyway there will be a change it cannot resist forever it will resist for a, for some time depending on how big your resistance is you will struggle and you will suffer but once you taste the taste of freedom of not doing of being the observer only this mind will start cooperating you won't be able to give up this blissful state the sweetness of simply being this is this is a slow process but it will happen now starting from now so good luck and all the best for your spiritual journey we are going to continue our series of transmissions in our next episode thank you for listening Asto Mama